Hello friends, Dave Robinson with the Under Media Network, uh, uh, sitting here with the mighty Brad Bullier. Oh, the mighty. The mighty Brad Bullier, <laughs> who just gave an awesome yes. seminar. Oh, thank you. Yes, on, on uh, uh, well, it was about patterns, patterns. within fiction. Right. Exactly. Um, and this actually kind of dovetails into our, our theme for, for this year's uh, uh, Periscope things at Gen Con. We're exploring the nature of the modern storyteller. Yep. Um, it, it, it seems that the narratives have changed. They're in transformation. Uh, uh, there's certainly a broader cultural uh, embracing that's right. going on. There's a broader gender, sexuality. Yep. There's also a lot of technology that's become available, that continues to become available. Uh, transmedia opportunities and right. so on. Right. What are you seeing as the changing role of today's storyteller with with games and transmedia and the narrative shifting so dramatically yeah Jen, do you mean in terms of story the narrative or how we work as authors take your creators? because really I mean this is a huge topic which well, what do you where do you feel the most comfortable addressing well I think um, in terms of uh, I think you're on the money in terms of the the types of stories that are being told um, things are becoming more inclusive and will continue to go that way mm -hmm. um, I, I think the the industry as a whole doesn't shift um, easily it, it, it takes probably 15 to 20 years I think for, sure. for and what happens is uh, we, we all follow speaking of patterns um, the publishers follow these as well right they look at things that succeed mm -hmm. right so if something pops um, in, in this new sort of world of, of fiction that we're talking about, mm -hmm. and then another one does, suddenly everybody wants to get that type of story. And so I think that's what's happening now. Now that, that there are more opportunities and people are more interested in telling those types of stories, um, I think that shift is now underway. Um, okay. And then once that train gets moving, um, I think it doesn't stop moving for a long time. Where do you think the impetus for that transformation, that change is? Because you're seeing a lot of self-pub and indie pub authors that are breaking new ground with yeah. their stories that, that perhaps the, the publishing industry, which is a little more conservative, they tend to yeah. follow yep. rather than lead. Yep. Uh, so these, these changes, these transformations, uh, is it a grassroots thing and then the publishers adopt? Yeah, I think, I think it is because um, people get... People want to read, we we're just talking about this in the panel, people want to read the same thing that they read before, only mm. different. <laughs> okay. Right? Uh, yeah. We get we get frustrated when we get told the same story over and over again. And, sure. and in some ways, that's what's been happening in, um, in popular fiction and breakout fiction for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it is grassroots. Um, and I think it, it has to happen the way, the change does happen that way, so that um, when those books succeed, when people want to read them, when they buy them, mm -hmm. The publishers take note, and that gives more opportunities, and then that feeds on itself. That becomes a cycle. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Well, and, and it's, I think it's very cool and affirming that, you know, as those game changers gain traction yeah. at the at the indie level, at the at the at the base level, self pub level, that publishers are becoming more attuned to what's working yeah. and, and grabbing onto that. So I know you got things to do and we will let you go. Just okay. one, can one I last get, question. Can I get yeah. one more, more nod? Please. Um, uh, so I, I do want to give, I, so I, my book is through DAW Books and I was talking with Betsy Wolheim. So there are, there are cases too where it's, publishing is not always following. They're not always looking for things that succeed and, and, and trying to reproduce that. Um, uh, DAW published uh, Nadia uh, uh Who Fears Death? Yes. Uh, and and that was something Betsy told me that she she just loved and she needed to publish. She had to publish it, you know. So there there are examples as well. I, I don't want to try to paste all of publishing in one way. Sure, uh, there are cases where they're they're looking for these gems that they that mm -hmm. they and they different need publishers have a different threshold for seeking out those new gems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. by all means, we're, we're not, you know, painting <laughs> all of publishing as this stolid and, and lurching yeah, machine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's not that case. Not in the case of the individual authors, and certainly not in the case of the publishers that are putting stuff out in the industry. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, excellent point. Yeah. Excellent point. Keeping things open. All right, guys, we're going to let Brad go. Thank you for tuning in. If you did so, if you're catching this later, hey, you know, stay tracking on the Ander Libram uh, Facebook feed, and there's going to be all sorts of awesomeness to come in the coming days of Gen Con. <laughs> you guys take care. We will talk to you soon. Bye -bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.